this is Miss Jess from the Paquanic Library, and we are continuing our illustrator author series this week with someone who actually writes and does the artwork for his books. His name is Il Sung Na, and he has some beautiful books that we have in our collection. So I just wanted to tell you a little bit about him before we get started. He was born in South Korea, and then he moved to London where he discovered his passion for children's books. And he decided to try different ways to illustrate and author books. And what he came up with was something that is called handmade painterly textures with digitally generated layers compiled in Adobe Workshop. What does that mean? Let me tell you. So he takes paintings, he makes paintings like little decorations, little swirls, and he paints them just on paper. You can see different textures here, different swirls. And then he kind of copies them. He traces them with little dark lines. And then he puts them all into his computer and he layers them all on top of each other. So he'll take the elephant and he'll put it on top of the water. And then he'll take the little umbrella and put it on top of all of those. So he does painting, he does drawing, and he also uses his computer to make all of his beautiful illustrations. This is the book we're going to be reading called The Thingamabob. What's a thingamabob? I will let you know. And also I will show you some of his other books where the illustrations are very similar. And then of course we will do our craft together. So here we have The Thingamabob. This is an elephant who finds something and he doesn't know what it is. So he calls it a thingamabob. One day, he found the thingamabob. So you can see the elephant there. And then you can see this weird red thingamabob that he found. Do you know what that is? Let's find out. He had no idea what the thingamabob was or where it came from. So he's just looking at this red thingamabob. It looks kind of like very thin. And then it's got this weird little hook thing on the top but the elephant has never seen anything like it before. Sometimes it didn't do anything at all. So sometimes it just kind of stood there. He poked it, he lifted it with his trunk. He tried to look into it. Sometimes it gave him a surprise. Whoosh, it popped open. See that? That was very surprising. He asked his friends if they knew what it was. So there's the sloth. He doesn't know what it is. Mr. Bear tried to eat it, said, I don't know what that is. The sheep looked at it and said, nope, sorry, can't help you. And the little bunny, no way, never saw a thingamabob before. They didn't seem to know. Ostrich with a head in the sand, not even looking at the thingamabob. Not very helpful. He thought, maybe I can fly with it. He thought maybe if he grabbed the thingamabob by the handle, the air would pick him up and he'd fly, or maybe not. Looks like it just collapsed and he fell. So it's not for flying. Maybe I can sail in it. He wants to sit in it and sail in it like a little boat. Do you think that thingamabob is gonna hold a big elephant like him? Maybe not. Nope, <laughs> he sunk right to the bottom and there's his little trunk up out of the water so he can breathe through his nose. It was not a boat. Do you know what it is? Let's find out. Maybe I can hide behind it. Do you think he can fit behind the thingamabob? He's an elephant. No, maybe not. <laughs> you can see he could not fit behind the thingamabob. What are you then, he cried. What do you think it is? What is that thingamabob? I think I know what it is, but we'll find out. Then big drops of rain started to fall. He did not want to get wet. What do you think is gonna happen? He's holding that thingamabob up over his head and it's starting to rain. Hmm. He did not need to get wet. Aha, now we see what the thingamabob is. It's something to keep you dry when it's raining. And neither did his friends. They didn't need to get wet either. It was an umbrella and he shared it with his friends. So the thingamabob was an umbrella. 
And now all his friends know, and they can keep dry too. The end, and if you look carefully, looks like everyone got their own thingamabobs. And then you have these beautiful, beautiful thingamabobs. <laughs> so it was an umbrella, is that what you guessed? Good job, you guys are so smart. So I wanna show you a few other books that we have by the same author illustrator, and you'll notice that the pictures are kind of the same type. So you can see, it looks like painting, swirly painting, different textured, almost like a watercolor. And then he would scan that into his computer and he would draw over it and he would layer all the different images. So this one is a book of babies. Super cute, there's a little baby chick. I have this one, hide and seek. That kind of looks like the same elephant from Thingamabob. I wonder how easy it would be for an elephant to play hide and seek. They're pretty big. Hmm. And then I have Snow Rabbit, Spring Rabbit, a book of changing seasons. And we're gonna read this one together after we do the craft. I need to read this with you because the snow might keep coming, but we know spring is right around the corner. So we'll read that one after, it's really cute. Here is the bag you can get from the lobby. And now we're going to make our very own elephant with a thingamabob. And as you know, when Miss Jess doesn't do the craft beforehand, she does it right along with you and learns as she goes. <laughs> okay, so you should have this white paper folded. You should have this little elephant. And you should have this red paper. And you're also going to need some crayons or markers. So I have my little markers here. And you're also gonna need some glue. So I have my glue. So it says the first step, step is to fold the red strip back and forth like an accordion or a fan. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. You take the very tip and you just fold a little bit over like that, see? Then you're gonna flip it over and fold it back the other way. Okay, so you're gonna flip it and fold it, flip it and fold it. It's a little tricky to get the hang of it, so you might wanna ask a big person to help you. Make sure you use those strong finger muscles because you kinda have to press it down when you're doing it, see? So I flip it over and I fold it and I kinda push it down. And I'm flipping it and folding it, and this is very important for our thingamabob because it's going to be the top part of the thingamabob. Do you remember what the thingamabob is? That's right, it's an umbrella. Do you have an umbrella? I have an umbrella that has SpongeBob on it and it's big and yellow and it's one of my favorite umbrellas. Here we go. So here's our little accordion that we have. Then we're gonna glue the ends to the folded paper. So you wanna glue it to the inside of the paper because it's gonna kinda of open up like this, okay? So we're gonna put glue on this side and on this side. Let's see if my glue will come out. It did. Oh, this is the really wet runny glue that I used last time that ended up being way more glue than I needed, which is okay, that's fine. So that's on one side. And then on the other side of your accordion, see if I squeeze out less glue and then kind of spread it around. Okay, that's, that's a better way to do it. Although I think I'm still gonna get glue all over my fingers again. Okay, so now we're gonna put it kind of towards the top because your elephant's gonna go underneath it. So you're gonna take your glue and put it down. And I'm just gonna hold it for a few seconds so that it really gets on there. It's stuck, hooray! Okay, so that's what yours should look like so far. And next, we glue on the elephant. So if the thingamabob or the umbrella is at the top, you want your elephant to be at the bottom. And I would put him just on one side of the paper 
because if you put them in the middle, he's going to get squished when it folds. So just put them, kind of glue them on the side there. So let's see if I can put just the right amount of glue. Not too much. All right, let's see. I glue him down like that. Okay. So now in order to make this look like an umbrella, you have to put the little handle on, right? So I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna draw a line down the middle, just like that. And then I'm gonna put a little hook on it so that the elephant can hold it with his nose. There, can you see that? And then of course, you can add any kind of details you want. Like I'm gonna put some brown on the ground, just so it looks like maybe because it's raining, there's a little bit of mud down there. And then I'm gonna make some clouds because the rain comes out of clouds, right? So let's see. turn it around and I will show you my little creation here. Okay. So, so far I've got the grounds and I've got some clouds and I think for my finishing touch, I'm going to do some raindrops. If you want, you can even draw some of Elephant's friends and stick them under the umbrella too. And voila, you have your elephant thingamabob. Oh, that was super fun, I like that. I guess you could even make it into a card. I would wait till it dries though first. And then you can kind of fold it closed and you can Maybe write a little on the front there. You can either write to someone or you can make it be your own book and you can write the thingamabob by Miss Jess. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Okay, now that we're done with our craft, we're gonna put our glue, we're gonna close our glue up, a little sticky. Use a wet wipe or some water and soap with that. You just kinda like wipe it on there. Always put your stuff away. So I'm putting my markers back in their little container. Well, that one rolled away, so we'll get that one later. Okay, close up my markers, put this aside, and then as promised, one more book, Snow Rabbit, Spring Rabbit. So while I'm reading this, see if you can notice kind of how similar the illustrations are, the artwork. So you can see, you can see it looks like he kind of painted with watercolor, and then on top of it, there's almost looks like little stamps where like he drew the white little snowflakes and snow. And then the rabbit looks like it got stuck on afterwards. Lots of different cool ways. And he did that in his computer afterwards. So this is our rabbit. When snow falls to the ground and all the trees are bare, everyone knows it's winter, including the rabbit. Have you ever seen a rabbit like that? A white one? It's like a snow rabbit. So that he can camouflage in the snow. Right? Camouflage is when you're the same color as what's behind you. So if I was blue and I stood in front of this wall, you couldn't see me because that's camouflaged. But I am not blue. Some fly away from the cold. So sometimes when it's cold, the birds will fly south where it's warm. That's called migration. You can see them all, all flying to where it's warmer. Oh, look, there's a little bunny right down there. Some have a long, cozy sleep where they live. So it looks like we have some bears in a cave and they're sleeping. That's what I'd like to do. It's called hibernation. That's when you go find somewhere warm and cozy and you stay there until it's warm enough to go back outside. Oh, and there's the bunny hiding. <laughs> some swim to warmer waters. So here we have turtles, or maybe they're tortoises. They're swimming from the cold water to the warm water. 
Let's see if we can find the bunny here. Oh, can you find the bunny? Right there on top of the turtle, taking a little trip. While some have thick woolly coat, they can stay in the snow. So these are the sheep and they've got nice thick woolly coats. Almost like when you're wearing your sweater and you're nice and warm. Where's that bunny? That's hard to see because the bunny's white and the sheep is white. You see the bunny right there? I know. Some gather extra food for winter. Have you seen the squirrels? When winter's coming, you see them collecting their little nuts. One time a nut fell from a tree and hit me right in the head. I don't know if they did it on purpose or not. You can see a huge pile right there. Looks like they're gonna be ready. Where's that bunny? Do you see the bunny? Oh, there he is right there. <laughs> While some travel to find things to eat. We have lots of deer where I used to live with my parents. There was lots of wooded area and you'd see lots of deer. And it looks like that deer's prancing. Can you see the bunny prancing along? See that bunny right there? Yeah. The bunny's learning all kinds of things. Some stay very still. So it looks like these crocodiles or alligators are very, very still. I think one of them might be winking at you. Can you see the bunny? Where's that bunny? There it is. Well, some keep busy moving fast and staying warm. So it looks like these little creatures, I think they're mice, they're burrowed under the ground. Looks like they dug some little caves and some little holes under the ground to store all their food for the winter and to keep warm and safe. Almost looks like a little maze. Can you find the bunny there? Well, the bunny's not gonna be under the ground, so maybe the bunny's up top. Let's see. Oh, yep. I see that bunny up top there. But, when the snow has melted and the trees are in bloom, everyone knows it's spring. So that's how we know spring is coming. Look for those flowers, look for those trees that are starting to turn back to their green leaves. There's little sheep. I see the deer in this picture. I see the mice. I see the squirrels. You know what? I don't see the bunny in this picture. I wonder where the bunny went. Let's find out. Maybe he's on the next page. Oh, he is, <laughs> including the rabbit. So it looks like this little rabbit is brown colored. So that's not the snow bunny. This is just a, like a brown bunny or brown rabbit. A little flower in his ear. He knows it's spring, right? Because you can see all those flowers. You can see the green on the trees and the green grass. The and that was beautiful. I like that. And that's a book of changing seasons. So hopefully when you look around outside, you'll see the flowers coming and you'll see maybe the squirrels back. I know I heard a lot of birds this morning. So that's how you know it's getting warmer because all the animals are coming back and everything's getting green. So hopefully spring is on the way. And if you come to the children's department, you'll see that we're all decorated for spring as well. And if you had fun looking for the bunny in these pictures, then you should also come and check out our I Spy wall. Have you ever done an I Spy before? We have I Spy books that you can check out. It's when you're trying to find a hidden picture. So our I Spy wall has all kinds of cool spring things on it. And then you have to find different things. It's like a challenge. So if you want to come and check that out, come and visit us at the children's department. Or if you just want to come check out a book, or if you don't know what book you want to read, you can come and we will help you. Miss Jen is here, Miss Valerie, Miss Kaylin, and me, Miss Jess. You can come up to one of us and say, hey, I really want to read a book about bunnies, or I really want to read a book about dump trucks or dinosaurs, and we will find you that perfect book. So come and check it out and give us a visit.